Hello and welcome to this RPG Maker VX Ace tutorial series. I am Murti and I'm going to guide you through this tutorial series dealing with rather basic features in the program and more advanced features later on. This first video is going to deal with the basic interface of the program. If we start to look at the program interface you can see that this is divided into three major areas. This is your working area where you're going to create your world. Here you put objects, mountains, lakes, forests and so on and towns in different maps. You create more than one map and you teleport between them. If we have a look on the left hand side you will see a list of maps here. At this point there is only one map available and it comes with a new project. I have called my project Tutorial RPG but I have not named the map. I can left click this and click Map Properties in order to bring up the map properties. And here I can map, ma name my map whatever I want. I want to call this World Map. There are different things that you can do with this map. I can increase its width and its height in order to make the map bigger. A world map would probably be much bigger than this. I can specify a um, BGM which is the background music of the map. Currently there is no music. If I check this box this becomes available. I can click this button to bring up the BGM chooser or selector. Here I can choose different kinds of music. I'm going to choose field 2 for this map. I can preview it if I want to and change its pitch if I want the pitch to be higher up or lower than the default value. The default is always 100%. Also the volume can be changed. To confirm I click OK and now field 2 is the auto changed background music which means that the background music will automatically change to this music here once the player enters the map. By doing this and checking this box the music that was already playing will continue to play. I can also change a BGS which is the background sound. This creates ambience to your map like dripping drops of water or fire, a quake, rain, river, the sea, storm and wind recreate ambience to your map. Currently I don't want any ambience to my world map. I can also choose a specify battle back which is the battle background. Once the player enters a combat or a battle and enters combat mode he will be presented by this background. This is where your enemies will appear. I can pick and choose which one I want and then create a floor like a ship and a background. I think this looks nice but it doesn't look like a field. To click OK I'm going to confirm my changes and the map size has increased. Currently there is nothing in here. I want to make map. So I'm going to start by choosing this rectangle tool here which is my current painting tool. I'm going to change from uh, this water tile to the grassland tile. I'm filling up everything. Instead of using the rectangle tool I can also use the ellipse tool which will create for instance some water or I can use the fill tool if I want to change all of this 
into this tile instead to create more of a desert. Currently I want to change this, all of this into an island so I'm going to fill it with water and then I'm going to start painting an island. You have probably noticed this little icon here and this is the player start position. When the game starts this is where the, the player will start. I can change this if I want if I change mode from map creation which is this mode I'm in now and change it into the event mode. When I'm in this mode I cannot start drawing any map. However, I can move around this item here which is what we call an event. I can also create new events in these squares. Notice that the program is uh, very grid based. So everything you do has to uh, be placed inside this grid. The third tool or the third mode which is the map mode, the event mode and then the region mode. This is where you can separate your map into different regions and call them by numbers 1 and 2 and 3 and so on. This is useful if you want different enemies to appear in different areas of the map. So if I go back to the map tool and start painting a forest in this area and then I start painting some desert in this part of the map then I might want different enemies to appear in the forest and in the grassland and in the desert. The same kind of animals don't live in the desert as do in the forest. To do this I use the region mode. Now if I start I can copy anything there is on the map by right clicking it and then I can continue painting. If I make an enemy appear only in region 2 on this map that means that it will only appear here. If I want it to appear only in region 3, it will appear only in this region that says number 3. And finally, if it says region 1, it will only appear in this region that says number 1. This is all uh, made in the map properties. If I go back into map properties and look under encounters, there I can create a new encounter. Double click to make a new encounter. Now I want to encounter Slime 2 which is a troop of enemies and I want not to encounter this enemy in the whole map which is the default but I want to specify a region. I want this only to appear in region 1. I can also make it appear in two different other regions, but if I want it only in region 1, I'll leave these at 0, because there is no region 0. I click OK, and click OK. Now the slime will only appear in region 1, which means that it would repair, appear only in the forest. It will not appear in region 3, and not in region 2. I can specify other, other uh, troops of enemies to appear in these regions. Finally, we're going to have a look at the last tools that are available in the program main screen, which are the database, the resource manager, the script editor, the sound test, the character generator, and finally the playtest mode. The most advanced of these features are the database, and the script editor. And we are going to have a look at these more in depth in a later tutorial. First is the database and the database is as you can might guess where everything 
in your game. All the data in your game is stored. Everything from actors and their skills and their statistics and so on to different items, to different skills where you can create your own skills. The items, the weapons, the armors where you can create your own sets of items, weapons and armors. Enemies, you can create new enemies. The troops, which are uh, groups of enemies that will appear in the map. The states that your characters can fall in. The hero can become, for instance, confused or blind. These are specified in the database. Animation. This is where you create the special effects, if you will, uh, for your skills. The tile set is where you can change how the different tile sets will behave. For instance, you can choose which kind of tile is going to be solid, which means that the player cannot walk through it, or if the player is going to be able to walk through them. If you import your own tile sets, this is where you will uh, make all the necessary arrangements. Finally, there is a common event. We create common events, that is uh, uh, important events in your game that are reported repeatedly and might be necessary to have in this screen. The system tab is where you set all different options for your game like sound effects and music. These can be changed mid-game using events. Also, the player's starting position can be changed here. And also, if you have vehicles in your game, the starting position for these can be set here as well. The title screen can be changed here, along with some different uh, options for your game. The type of currency default is called G. I can call this gold if I want to. And the game title if you want to change it. Finally, in terms, you can change the names of the different statistics and command names for your game. Like if you want to call level something else, if you want to call it rank, this is where we do that. I may also change HP to health if I want that. The resource manager is where you import resources for your game. The script editor is a very advanced tool for scripters in order to change fundamentals in the game. The character generator is a tool to create new characters. This will create both a sprite for the world map and the face graphic to go with the menus and with the battles. You can also use these in dialog boxes if you choose so. So this covers the basics of the RPG Maker interface. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time in the next RPG Maker VXA tutorial.